Why are we studying social insects? They are particularly well suited to post genomic era because they can be studied at multiple different levels of biological organization from the gene to ecosystem and much is known about their natural history. The sequencing of the honeybee genome provides additional tools and information that can be used to examine all insect societies. Termites All members of the order Isoptera are eusocial insects. Termites feed primarily on the cellulose and lignin found in the plant cell walls. Termites cannot digest the cellulose directly, so they rely upon a symbiotic bacteria and protozoa that is trichonymphite which live in their gut to supply most of the enzymes needed for cellulose digestion. Ecologically, termites play an important role in the environment by helping to break down and recycle dead wood and other plant tissues. They become pests when their appetite for wood and wood products extends to human homes, fence posts, building materials, cardboards and other valuable products. In tropical and subtropical forests where termites are abundant, railroads must use expensive metal tiles because wooden ones are quickly destroyed. Termite Colony Termite lives in a nest or colony with hundreds, thousands or in even millions of siblings. In fact, the termite colony is really a large extended family, within which are various groups of individuals having different functional roles in accordance to their caste system. Worker The worker caste is the largest group. It consists entirely of immature, soft-bodied, wingless individuals which perform all of the hard labor in the colony. They clean, maintain and repair the nest, gather food and water, care for the young and construct new tunnels and galleries as the colony grows. All these juveniles have the genetic capacity to undergo additional molds and become soldiers or reproductives but most will spend their entire lives as workers. Soldier Members of the soldier caste are larger in size but fewer in number than the workers. They too are wingless but are equipped with large heads and powerful jaws. Their job is apt to their name that is to guard the nest site and protect it from attacks by foe ants or other intruders. In some species, the soldiers lack jaws but have a large gland in the head that shoots defensive chemicals through a nozzle at the front of head. The soldiers are unable to care for themselves and hence they are fed and groomed by the worker. Reproductive The reproductive caste always includes a king and a queen who are the parents of the termite family and founders of the colony. Some species also have a few supplemental reproductives who share the egg-laying duties. These are the only adult insects in the colony. The queen lays large number of eggs which develop into more workers and soldiers as the family grows. In every mature colony, there also develops an annual population of young winged reproductives that swam from the parent nest for a short mating flight. After flight, the delicate wings break off and the new king and queen set out to find another nest site and start a new colony. Large colonies with multiple reproductives may also split into two or more daughter colonies, a process known as budding. Regulation of Colony the termite's caste system is regulated by pheromones. The king and the queen each produce spatial pheromones that circulate throughout the colony and inhibit workers of the same sex from molting into reproductive adults. A death in the royal family or an increase in the size of the colony 
results in a lower concentration of the corresponding pheromone and subsequently one or more workers will molt into replacement reproductives. Likewise, the concentration of sex specific soldier pheromones regulate the number of male and female soldiers to fall within an optimal range based on colony size. Kinds of termites About 2750 different species of termites are known. These can be divided into two groups. One, those that live entirely within the wood and number two, the more advanced species that tunnel and nest in the soil. In terms of their ecology and behavior, the most primitive species are similar to certain wood dwelling cockroaches with whom they may share a common ancestor. These primitive species often have specialized habitat requirements, nesting only in rotten wood, damp wood or dry wood. Their colonies are rather small and persist only as long as the food resources last. All wood dwelling termites produce distinctive waste pellets which are often the first sign of an active infestation. Subterranean termites construct underground nests and have the ability to tunnel through the soil to find new food resources. These colonies are often long lived and may grow to include several million individuals. Subterranean termites that live in North America and Europe often invade wooden structures above the ground by building earthen tubes that serve as protective tunnels between the nest and their food source. These tubes are good evidence of a termite infestation. In Africa and Australia, other subterranean species mix bit of soil with saliva to build nest mounds that may be up to 20 feet tall. The inside of a mound is divided into numerous chambers and galleries. The king and the queen live in a spatial cell deep inside the mound. The female's abdomen grows into size until it is large enough to hold many thousands of eggs. The queen lays these eggs at the rate of several thousands a day. Worker termites carry the eggs away to the spatially constructed cells in the nest. There the workers care for the young as they hatch from it. Some of the mound building termites cultivate underground fungus gardens. They collect dead plant material, mix it with saliva and their own waste products to create a paste and inoculate these substances with spores of a symbiotic fungus. The termites feed on spatial structures produced by the growing fungus. Evolution of sociality How could eusociality evolve? Darwin in his Origin of Species thought that sterile workers in the bee colony being unable to transmit their genes represent a special challenge to his theory of natural selection. This is because natural selection depends on the transmission of the traits that convey selective advantages to the individuals and these traits have to be determined genetically, so they are heritable. If workers are sterile, how can they transmit the helping traits to the next generation? Genetic explanations. This problem troubled biologists until William Hemington found an ingenious way to explain how a trait can be inherited without direct reproduction. Hamilton introduced a brave new concept, inclusive fitness, which basically says someone could still have a reproductive fitness even if he or she has no direct offspring. This is while the traditional fitness only count how many children one has, but inclusive fitness takes account of all others who share genes with the person or animal. 
For example, I should share approximately 50% of gene with my full brother. Therefore, if I decide not to marry and have kids, but instead help my brother to raise four children, it is equivalent to myself having two children. This inclusion of anyone else's fitness who shares common genes by descent, factored by a coefficient of relatedness, is called inclusive fitness. Therefore, although workers do not reproduce, if they share genes with their mother, the queen, to raise more sisters, that is the future queens, their genes would be transmitted too to the next generation. In fact, in honeybees and other hymenoptera, the relatedness among sisters are higher than among other animals. This is because of the haplodiploidy sex determination. Drone develop from the unfertilized egg and carry one copy of chromosome from their mother only, while females are fertilized and carry two copies of chromosomes diploid. Haploid drones do not have the complementary copy of genes to do exchange, so all the sperms produced by a single drone are identical, if not considering newly produced mutations. The workers who share the same father and mother are therefore also called super sisters because of this higher relatedness. This theory in which one can pass genes through relatives and gain fitness is called kin selection. Hamilton postulated that because super sisters share 75 percent of their genes, it is actually a better deal to be a worker to whom a new queen would have 75 percent of the genes by common descent with her, whereas from the queen's point of view, she is only transmitted 50 percent of her genes to the new queen. In this sense, the inclusive fitness is actually higher for the sterile worker sisters than for the fertile mother. Ecological considerations. There appear to be common ecological features for other eusocial animals other than Hymenoptera. For example, for newly discovered aphids, thrips, beetles and shrimps, they all have a commonly held valuable resource that is nests, mounds, galls or sponges. Queller and Strassmann distinguish these eusociality from the life insurers in which cooperation creates benefits mainly through reducing the risk of reproductive failures. Crespi argued that three conditions are sufficient to explain occurrences of eusociality for the fortress defenders. The first is the food and shelter which are in enclosed habits. Because of the high value of the resources, there should be strong competition for these resources. Lastly, because of the competition, selection should promote effective defense amongst the organisms. Life history considerations. Because one criteria for eusociality is overlap in generations, parental care has been recognized as an important prerequisite for eusociality. Other traits such as high adult mortality, long periods of offspring dependence and delayed age of reproduction can favor the development of helpers. More recent studies suggest that mutualistic interactions and restricted dispersal can also foster evolution of sociality. It is a known fact that socialism in insects is something very unique to them. These lower organisms evolved this as a stereotype behavioral pattern. What socialism, caste, creed, ism as is seen among human species is something far different scenario as this is an outcome of learning set learning pattern of behavior. 